Hello and welcome to the channel, or welcome back if you are so inclined. In today's video, we're taking a look at these, the Logitech G Pro X Wireless. Now these things retail for around 180 to 200 USD, which is double the cost of the wired version, which I previously made a review of, and I was quite impressed. So, well, let's take a look. Now in terms of the mic on the G Pro X Wireless, with this being a $180 headset, I would expect the mic to be pretty good for a wireless mic. We must accept that wireless mics are not necessarily very good when compared to their wired counterparts. However, at this price range, I'd expect it to be pretty good. So let's give it a bit of a listen. Now this is set just as it's open settings, as it is out of the box. I've adjusted no settings whatsoever with this headset. This is the raw mic audio. And as you can hear, it's probably not that great. There's a bit of hiss, a bit of pop. It's a bit, bit nasally. There's not very much richness or body to it whatsoever, which is a bit disappointing. It sounds rather similar to the way that the one on the wired headset did, which wouldn't be too bad, but I'd expect more for this money. For when you're approaching the $200 or sometimes at $200, I'd expect a bit more. Now, as I said, this is just the raw setting. So this is kind of what you could expect if you're playing on PlayStation, for instance, or the Switch. But let's have a quick listen now to see what it's like when we enable the actual blue voice by simply doing this. Now, as you can hear, this suddenly, the software adds more body, adds more tone, it's more rich. Everything about it just sounds better, but it's all just software. Now this, when you turn on the, the actual blue voice mode, it instantly goes into the broadcaster one setting. Now I'm not gonna go through each and every setting. You can individualize this to yourself. And I very much like that. Within the software, you can go through various settings. You can change all sorts of different things. The noise gate, that's always a good one. If you have a, a bit of a clicky keyboard, for instance, but it's all, I don't know, I'd expect a little bit more for this price. The problem is when you're applying software to a headset. What you're really doing, you're taking what you've already got and if, the, if what you put in isn't very good, what you get out isn't gonna be very good. Yes, you can apply a bit of a tweak here and there, but overall, I would have expected more from the mic, but it's not that bad. Now, in terms of the audio for these, much like the G Pro X Wired version, it's very natural sounding. It's very clear and there's a lot to it. It's, it's very good. Now, these are sporting 50 millimeter drivers and the frequency response range is just a standard 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now, the audio all round, especially the stereo, is very good. In terms of gaming, you do get good directional and distance audio. That's all very nice. It is. It's a very comfortable sounding headset. Everything is clear. Everything is there. The only thing that I'd say with this is sometimes with the bass, when you hear an explosion, there's nothing really punchy about it. It sort of glides into it nice and soft, which is good if you don't want the uh, the fright of a game. However, when you do want that fright, you don't necessarily get it with these. Now, the surround sound that comes with it, the 7.1, is a DTX2X, much like on the wired version, is okay. But there's nothing new about it for this headset that it hasn't changed at all. You can go into the software and you can change the settings. You can change the volume for different directions and all of that jazz. I did go through this quite a lot and it doesn't really make that much of a difference. The 7.1 is acceptable at best, but nothing overly major. Now, like I said with these, they don't sound bad. I don't wanna give that indication. In terms of gaming, these sound very good, if just not to that higher loudness level. In terms of music, however, I found them a bit weak. They're definitely for gaming. The treble is all good and the mids are solid. There's no getting away from that, but the bass just seems a little bit weak and it's that overall loudness that gets me. Now it is subjective. When I listen to music, I want it quite loud. I want it to be cranked. I want to feel the punch of the music. With these, that's just not possible without third-party software. And as I've said previously on the channel, I don't go into third-party software because that doesn't come with the product that you're buying. So taking a look at how this thing is actually put together, much like the wired version, the build quality of this is remarkably good. It really, really is. The headband itself will just flex all over and just snap back to that central point with no muss, no fuss. And I don't feel like any of this will actually break. Now on the headband, you have this wonderful leatherette, plush leatherette as we'll call it, with the pro moniker embossed or emblazoned across the top of it. And on the underside, there is a generous amount of padding. It is like a memory phone and it's quite firm and it's quite tough but soft across the top of the head. Now moving down from the headband itself, you do have these all metal forks or arms to hold the actual ear cup in place. And as you can hear, it sounds very solid and it sounds very, very robust. And just coming out from under those is this coiled 
cable that they've used, which adds that very retro classic headphone design to this. And I kind of like that these are exposed, so to speak. And you don't catch them. There's nothing in between that part of your head that would catch on these. So I don't see an issue with any of them breaking for that manner. Now, moving down from the forks themselves, on the outside of the ear cup, you have this, what looks like milled aluminium, but it does feel a bit plasticky. And although it looks very attractive, because of those grooves in it, it does pick up a lot of bits from your finger, grease, oil, bit of dust, things like that. And the same can be said for the plastic housing on the outside of the ear cup, which again is a very nice finish and it's very robust and a very, very sturdy plastic. However, the matte finish does allow for the picking up of grease from your fingers. So you do get quite a lot of fingerprints to it. So if you are a bit of a clean freak, probably not the best for you. Now, on the inside of the ear cup, you have this wonderful, again, leverette cushioning around the side, and they do come with additional padding for the ear cups that are not leather. They're a bit more, more of an airflow material. But on the inside of the ear cup, there's no padding over the driver at all. Now, my ears are rather large, and there are a few pointy out bits, I accept, but they do press against the driver housing, and it gets a bit uncomfortable. Nothing too bad, it just, I don't know, it feels like it pinches a little bit. Now the clamping force overall from these is around medium, I'd say. Now I have, a, I have a small head, yet I have to size these up quite a bit to get them to fit properly, which is unusual for me. It really is, but they are very, very comfortable. Now in terms of the design differences between this and the wired version, there's not a great deal to speak of at all. The weight has gone up by about 50 grams, and the actual ear cup housing is slightly broader. There's more girth to it. But that's not bad going when you've got to consider they are adding a battery and a wireless receiver to the headset itself. So that's pretty good going, to be perfectly honest with the way that they've done that. Now, on the side of the left ear cup, which is good, are all the controls. With this being a wireless headset, there's no dock anywhere. You have to use the actual ear cup itself. And I'm pleased to say they have put them all on one side, which leaves your trigger finger free for when you're playing any game whatsoever, if we're honest. Now that's all very cool. The mute button is just here, just underneath where the arm meets the actual ear cup itself. And it's just a simple depression switch. When it's out, you're not live. You have a little red marker around there to, let, to signify that you are in fact on mute. When it's depressed, you are live. Now in terms of the mic, you don't have a light to indicate this. You do have a tone. It's sort of a higher pitch tone to let you know you're live and a lower pitch tone to let you know that you're muted, which is all very lovely. Just beneath that, we do have the volume wheel and this is an infinity wheel and it feels very good. It really does. The bearings used on this feel very, very smooth, which is very nice. And as I said, it's an infinity wheel. So when you get to the high end of volume, it just keeps going. However, you do get a, a beep to signify you've maxed it out, which is useful. I don't know why, but it is. Anyway, beneath that, you have the power switch. And this is a switch, not a button. I'm not sure if the mic will pick this up. But it's kind of a nice, robust feeling, reliable type switch. And I haven't at any point knocked this to turn it off, just in case anyone was wondering. That hasn't happened with me whatsoever. And just beneath the power switch, we do have the USB Type-C connector. Hooray for USB. We finally got some more fast charging on a headset and I'd expect nothing less for 200 USD. Now moving to the mic. The mic is detachable and the connector is keyed. There's a square block on one side to ensure you get this in the right way because there's nothing else on the mic to signify which side should be facing you. So it's kind of a useful little bit that they've got there. Now, on the mic, let there be no confusion. This mic is not made by Blue. Do not be fooled. The Blue aspect of this is simply for software to adjust the mic itself, which I think in terms of marketing, it's probably a good strategy. And you probably should be aware that Logitech do in fact own Blue for the mics. They also own Astro. Now that puts the G Pro series of headsets in a bit of a quagmire. You can't make the mic so good that it competes with Blue. Why would you compete with yourself? Nor can you make the audio quality as good as that of Astro, because then you're delving into there and again, competing with yourself, which sort of limits where the G Pro X can sit within the market. And as I've said, this thing comes in between 180 and 200 USD, which is, that's putting it up against some very, very good headsets. So what is it that Logitech have actually crammed into this little box of joy for us? Well, off the bat, we've got the headset, which we've looked at, and we've got the mic, which we've looked at. What we haven't looked at yet is this. 
The little USB dongle. I say little, it's kind of on the larger side, but it would be because this is in fact the sound card for the Blue Voice software also. And it is kind of an attractive bit of kit. So when you consider it, it is a sound card as well, it isn't actually taking up that much room. It looks kind of cool. It's just a matte black finish with a glossed embossed version or rather representation of the G moniker, which is all very lovely. And that's about it. Now, the only word of caution I'd give with this, if you have this in the side of your PC and you have your PC on the floor, just be careful not to knock this. You could break the USB connector from the side of it, but that's about it. Now, in terms of storing this, all very lovely. You put it inside the ear cup of the headset and spin it round. Stuck in there forever until you decide to take it out. So that's nice and convenient and a nice little touch. We also get the carry case, much like in the wired version. I say much like, it's exactly the same. Slightly flexible, kind of a nice material with the G moniker again emblazoned across the front. All very lovely. I have mentioned these. These are the replaceable ear cups. Like I said, these are not the leverette, so they do leak a bit of that audio. And when the volume of this isn't overly great anyway, you kind of don't want that. But using the leverette does come with the unfortunate impact of heat on the side of your head. However, from using these for a good seven hours yesterday, which I actually did, I spent my weekend gaming, it was very comfortable. I felt nothing. There was no additional temperature around. It was all very, very nice. We also get this, the Type-C charging cable. It's not braided, I know, I know, for 200 pounds, I would have expected that. However, it is type C, which is all very good. The fast charging of these is outstanding and the battery life, by the way, on these is around 20 hours. So very, very functional, good for at least three full gaming sessions, I would say. We also get the obligatory paperwork, which as far as I can tell, this is only ever consulted when this breaks. Other than that, it's in there probably because they legally have to, although there is a little guide of how to change the actual ear cups, which is very easy. You just peel them off and put them on, all very simple. Now Logitech have been kind enough to send us also an additional one, two, three, four pieces of plastic. They are there just to protect the product themselves, but there must be a better way than using single use plastics. But there we are, that's what's in the box. All very lovely. So in conclusion, what do I actually think of this headset? It's a very nice headset and it's very good. There's no getting away from that. Is it worth the $200? I don't think so. I really don't think it is. When you can buy a headset that is effectively the exact same of this, but with a wire for $100 cheaper, possibly more. I don't know, how much do you value the convenience of wireless? Is it worth $100 to you? Which is a new mouse, by the way, which could easily improve your gaming experience more than a headset in some instances. For me, I just don't think it's worth the, the extra $100. I don't think the mic quality is particularly good. The audio is good and solid for gaming, but not for anything else. And also it's not very loud, which is quite irritating without the use of third-party software, that is. Now I did mention earlier that Logitech do in fact own Blue Voice and they do own Astro, which kind of sort of determines their position in the headset market, in the audio market overall, if we're perfectly honest. And it almost feels to me like this product has been released just to fit that pricing gap. That's all it is. Logitech didn't have anything there for around the $200 mark. And it feels as though this has been thrown in just to fill that void, which is quite disappointing to me. If you were going to buy this headset, I personally would recommend the wired version. You'll save a lot of money. The DTS is the same. The software is the same. You still get a, a sound card to plug into your PC, albeit you do need a wire to go in with it. But that's about it. And the cable that comes with it, by the way, is 10 feet long. So you plenty, plenty of room. But there we are. It's okay, I guess, but not for the money. If you did like what you watched, um, please do leave a thumbs up and why not subscribe if you're not already. If you didn't, thank you very much for watching to the end and I'm, I'm incredibly sorry I couldn't entertain you. But there we are. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful evening, noon, morning, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.